getting calls from different people asking the same questions is becoming increasingly concerning. So, I decided to make more research and come up with this video. This is not lack of knowledge, but for me to be absolutely sure of what I'm putting out there. And let me also stress that I have previously made a video on this topic, but since most people are lazy to check, here is another video. But this time, it's more precise. Um, before I continue, I need to make sure we are all in the same space. Get it? Same space. If you don't like that, well, you have a choice to stop the video. With the increase in scam activities around the Pi Network concerning sales of the Pi Network coin, another major concern that is rocking the Pi Network community is not knowing if selling the Pi coin at this time is not permitted by the core team especially when there are so many images of different Pi Network mining accounts that has been banned for up to 100 years. Yeah, you heard me right, 100 years. So if you are among those that have been asking if this is true, well, I will uncover that in this video today, and this is with much proof. At the end, you will know if the images flying around are created to scare people, or it's just pointing out the truth. Please pay attention as we look critically into this issue. To actually understand this properly, I will briefly go through the different stages. Stage 1, Stage 2, Stage 3, and Stage 4. Stage 3 and 4 will give us clarity and the answer we are all looking for. That's especially those who are scared that their Pi network account is at risk. It makes no sense to be part of the network for this long, only to get your account suspended for 100 years. In case you didn't get what I said, it is best you spend this few minutes to know if your account is indeed at risk. And if not, how do you avoid being in line for a ban on your account that you might never get to use? Remember, you must have done your KYC. So yes, if you get banned for 100 years, it means you are out of the game entirely. Let me give you a moment to digest all I have said so far by allowing the intro play. Let's go straight to phase one. In December 2018, the PI Network core team publicly launched the mobile app on the iOS App Store as an alpha prototype that onboarded the initial pioneers. On Pi Day, March 14th, 2019, the original Pi white paper was published, marking the official launch of the Pi Network. At this stage, the app allowed pioneers to mine Pi by contributing to the growth and security of the future Pi blockchain. As the eventual goal was to launch the mainnet and build an ecosystem around the Pi platform, the Pi app running on the centralized Pi server enabled mobile phone users, also known as pioneers, to contribute their security circles that, in aggregate, built the trust graph required by the consensus algorithm of the Pi blockchain, and in return, the pioneers received mining rewards. Furthermore, the centralized phase allowed the network to grow, the community to form, and the Pi token to be accessible and widely distributed. This phase also allowed for the iteration of many technical features and pioneer experience by leveraging community input throughout the development process. The following major accomplishments were achieved during this phase. The Pi Network app was listed the iOS App Store and Google Play Store. Pi Network grew from zero to over 3.5 million engaged pioneers. The Pi Network reached over 233 countries and regions around the world. In comes phase two. In March 2020, Pi Network took a big step towards a decentralized future. They launched a test net. This test net involved real people around the world running special software called nodes on their computers. These nodes helped test how well the Pi blockchain would work in terms of connecting users, running smoothly, staying secure, and handling a growing number of users. The testnet also gave developers a chance to build and test apps that would eventually run on the real Pi blockchain. Three key goals of the testnet. One, decentralization. By using nodes from the community, Pi was testing how to spread control of the network. Two, growth. The testnet ran alongside the mobile mining app, allowing more people to join the Pi network. Three, creating uses. The testnet worked with the Pi browser to let developers build apps for the Pi ecosystem. Next, we look at the testnet achievements, released multiple versions of the node software, launched the Pi platform, including a wallet, browser, and developer tools, tested a pilot KYC app, held the first PI network hackathon for developers within the community, grew the Pi network to over 30 million users and over 10,000 active nodes, 
with many more waiting to join. Expanded Pi Network's reach to nearly every country in the world. Overall, the testnet was a successful way for Pi Network to prepare for its future as a decentralized blockchain network. Remember I said stage three and four will give more clarity and point us to right answer to the question. Well, ready or not, here it comes. Pi Network's journey to a fully functional blockchain won't happen overnight. To ensure a smooth and secure transition for its millions of users, Pi is taking a two-step approach to launching its mainnet. Step 1. The Enclosed Network, which started in December 2021. Think of this as a controlled launch. The mainnet is live, but with a firewall blocking outside connections. This gives pioneers time to complete their KYC verification, a crucial security step. Once KYC'd, pioneers can migrate their Pi from the phone app to the real mainnet blockchain, spend their Pi within the Pi ecosystem on Pi apps for goods and services, or transfer it to other pioneers, lock up their Pi for a higher mining rate, and this is optional. To move closer to the truth, we must look at the benefits of the enclosed network. Smoother KYC rollout, millions of users need to go through KYC. The enclosed network buys time for a gradual rollout without overwhelming the system. App developers can deploy Pi apps in this safe space, allowing the Pi ecosystem to flourish before external connections are allowed. Testing and refinement. The Pi team can use real data from the enclosed network to fine-tune the mainnet before opening it up fully. Focus on internal growth. Pioneers can explore Pi's internal features and utilities without outside distractions. After the enclosed network step is achieved, the next step is to transit to the open network. Once enough pioneers are KYC'd and the ecosystem is well-developed, the firewall will come down. This is the full launch, where the Pi blockchain connects with the outside world. Please pay adequate attention to this part of the video. Once the open mainnet is achieved, users will be able to trade Pi with external exchanges and other blockchains. Explore a wider range of uses for Pi beyond the Pi ecosystem. Why a two-step approach, you might ask? Don't worry, I got you covered. This approach ensures a stable and secure launch for everyone. It gives pioneers time to get ready, developers time to test their apps, and the Pi team time to address any potential issues before opening the floodgates. This stage launch allows Pi Network to build a strong foundation for its future as a thriving and connected blockchain ecosystem. Did that sink in? Make sure you understood that as we go into the final stage. But wait, one important question to take note of is this. What happens to Pi Network unclaimed mainnet balances during enclosed network? Well, here's a breakdown of what happens to Pi balances in the mining app during the enclosed mainnet period if they haven't been transferred to the mainnet yet. Let's assume Pioneer A has Pi contributed to their balance by Pioneers C, E, and G. This is referring to team and security circles. These contributions haven't become transferable balance yet for Pioneer A. These contributions from C, E, and G will stay in Pioneer A's mobile app until C, E, and G complete their KYC. Once they KYC, the corresponding Pi becomes transferable to A's mainnet balance. If C, E, and G never KYC, the PI they contributed to A will eventually expire. Pi Network will set a deadline to allow enough time for KYC across the network. Any Pi that remains unclaimed due to a lack of KYC will be removed from the system. It won't be transferred to the mainnet at all. This freed up Pi will be added back to the overall Pi mining pool for other KYC pioneers to mine, staying within the total PI supply allocated for mining. Now you see why I keep stressing that you should mine at higher rate as much as you can. I talked about this in my last video. Don't worry, the link will be in the description of this video. Basically, if people in your network don't KYC the Pi they contributed to, you won't be available on the mainnet and will be used for mining by others who completed KYC. It's that simple. Moving on to stage four. While pioneers can enjoy some functionalities within the PI ecosystem, during the enclosed phase, there are restrictions in place to ensure a smooth and secure transition. Here's a breakdown. No outside connections. Pi won't be connected to other blockchains or crypto exchanges yet. It's like a private party before the big bash. Access through Pi network only. You can only access the Minet through the Pi wallet and Pi apps on the Pi browser. Think of it as using a special Pi app to enter the party. Firewall in control. Even though the mainnet blockchain is technically accessible to any computer, a firewall acts like a security guard, enforcing these restrictions. Core team steers the ship. 
Only core team nodes operate on the mainnet during this phase. They're basically the DJs ensuring everything runs smoothly within the PI ecosystem. Focus on internal growth. The enclosed network prioritizes the development of the Pi ecosystem. You can spend Pi within Pi apps and transfer it to other pioneers. Allow transactions, buying things with Pi in Pi apps, transferring Pi between pioneers for goods or services, restricted activities, converting Pi to cash, trading Pi for other cryptocurrencies, using Pi for promises of future cash or crypto. Overall, the enclosed network acts as a safe space for Pi to grow internally before connecting to the wider world. So the answer to the question is yes. There is every possibility that an account that violates these rules might be banned. What I am not specifically sure is how long the ban is for. The length of the ban was not stated and has not been announced either. If you feel this is all gibberish, you are welcome to do your own research. But don't say I didn't warn you. My advice and opinion is to hold on to your mind coin and wait for the open mainnet transition. I have clearly mentioned this in almost all my previous videos. Stay away from scammers. By the way, this whole research was conducted from the official Pi Network website. You are welcome to check. Subscribe for more. Make sure to share to help others. Give a thumbs up if this video brought value to you. And one more thing. Thank you if you made it all the way to the end. You are indeed a true pioneer. My name is Tony and this is Basic Knowledge. Till my next video, keep mining.